Okay. Joining us now on the desk is Audrey Fulyun from Quantum Wealth and, of course, still my guest host, Kevin Algier from Imara SP Reed. A very warm welcome, Audrey. Okay, Thank let's you. start off with uh, what we see from an asset class perspective. Where would you be putting your money right now? Do you think that it is wise to start accumulating equities given the fact that there is so much value to be found? There is definitely value in the equity market currently. So we have seen a lot of risk aversion in the past few months and um, equities are looking cheap. If you look on, at the on PE ratios, we're trading sort of at a 12 PE on the market as a well. whole. Resource stocks are trading on single digit PE. So there's definitely value in equity markets. Having said that, there's still a lot of uncertainty in the global economy. We've spoken at length about you, the problems in Europe, about slowing growth in the developed world as well as in China. So you need to take a diversified view on your portfolio currently. We don't favor any particular asset class that we will go overweight extremely. We do favor global equities currently, but we also need to, have, you need to have some cash in your portfolio as well as bonds just for that diversification benefits that it offers an investor. Global equities, which global equities are you favoring right now? Developed market equities do look attractive. So if you look at the price to book valuations as well on the MECI world, it's at the lowest level it's been in years. So uh, we particularly like Germany. We don't think that the sell-off that they've experienced this year is warranted. Although they do have some problems, Germany is a strong economy, they've got good exports, so we just think there's a lot of value. So we are looking to increase a, a position in Germany in the global space. Audrey, in South Africa, relative to global equities, on terms of valuation basis, how do we match up? Definitely, we are at some of the most expensive levels. The discount that South Africa has been trading to the global markets have disappeared completely almost, and we sort of on par with the S&P if you look at P levels. So an investor has to ask the question, is this parity, is it valid, is it reasonable, or should South Africa be trading at a discount to these global markets? It's interesting because from the height, our market has fallen 10% and some uh, developed markets have fallen 20 to even 30%. Uh, part of that is because we've been buffeted by the RAND, but uh, I know a lot of people have been surprised that our market hasn't fallen further, even though with this uh, RAND weakness. Uh, do, you th do you think uh, the fact that we've held up so well is, is warranted and uh, would you rather be switching money to places like Germany or other places where you're seeing value? This definitely, uh, it has helped South African investors that the market hasn't fallen as much. So there's still a lot of interest in f em emerging markets from global investors. They need some yield and our equity market as well as our global bond or our bond market is offering a higher yield than you are getting in the global bond market. So um, yes, a position in South Africa is still warranted and if we look at our investors, a lot of them are still South African investors, so you are exposed to South African inflation, so you do need a position in South Africa. But again, like I said, diversification is key currently for us, us and you do actually need to increase your global exposure. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think the fact also that South Africa is a very strong regulated market does help us in times when there is a sell-off as investors still have confidence in our market and the companies that are listed on our stock exchange. The truth is, I mean, you're talking about the MSCI World Index. What about the S&P 500, which has done around 20% so far uh, this year? JSC all share, I mean, we're only down 5.3%. I suppose we should count our lucky stars. What about mm. having exposure to direct U.S. stocks? Yes. Do, do you have appetite for that? We do have appetite for that as well. So a lot of the stocks on the S&P don't just earn their earnings from the global developed markets. They have exposure, the big names all have exposure to emerging markets and that's where they are looking to grow their earnings. So looking at a specific country, it's more you need to look at the specific stocks that you want exposure to as the place where they are listed is less of a concern to us as the global or the region where they are inv um, listed on. When you're looking at doing that offshore buying, do you go through, a f I know that you are a multi-manager, do you go through another fund, do you go through an exchange traded fund or do you invest directly in some of those um, big American stocks? We do make use of global fund managers, so we will utilize different funds. Uh, we don't do stock picking ourselves on the global side, we leave that to the managers who's 
proven to have skill there. And then also we've seen a few of the South African uh, equity managers like John Bicard of Investec Value. He's taken 25% of his portfolio offshore, which we actually do like because we know the manager, we know the company that he works for. So, and we've got, we prefer to use then managers who we already familiar with who are looking for global equities within their portfolio. So your stock picks are Sassel, Vodacom, MTN and Remgro and I don't see any BHP Billiton and Anglo-American <laughs> here. Yes. Why not? Um, definitely the diversified miners are still very attractive. So um, the previous time I was on the show we spoke at length about Anglo-American and why we do like Anglo-American. They are very attractive but having said that you can't just have resources in your portfolio. So there's a lot of uncertainty. We don't know where global growth is going and like we said earlier in the show the um, these stocks can stay cheap for a while still. So you need to diversify your portfolio so that you can build a portfolio really with uh, diversified and uncorrelated sources of return. I think that's what we are looking for currently. So definitely we've got BHP, Peloton and Anglo-American in some of our top holdings. But at, if you look at some of the other shares like a Sassel, it's also trading on a single digit P. It's got a good dividend yield. Um, the oil price should um, stay, we think, above $100. I mean, it's come back now, but it only to $100. So that should sustain the Sassel price. Plus, they are diversifying their earnings. So we like Sassel. Then Remgro as well. It's a well-diversified company. You get exposure to listed and unlisted equities. Again, the diversification theme comes strong in with a company such as Remgro. So you can diversify just by buying Remgro. Your thoughts, MTN and Vodacom, both as stock picks. Kevin? Uh, and I know that, I mean, MTN, some say that is, it's, it's fully priced. Would you agree? We prefer Vodacom at this stage, mm -hmm. and for the year, I think we've been rewarded for that. Uh, both of them are becoming dividend plays. Um, however, we prefer the characteristic of Vodacom at this stage. We just think MTN uh, at this stage is fully valued, so we're drawn a valuation perspective. And that Sassel Vodacom. and Bremgro? We hold both Sassel and Remgro as well. Uh, Remgro is trading at a significant discount to its mm. net asset value. Uh, NAV is at, I think, at 137 Rand and yeah. it's trading at 107. Now, historically, it, will, it has always traded to a discount to its net asset value, but sometimes that discount can be 12% and at the moment it's closer to, to uh, it's actually slightly above 20%, 20%, in which case we're happy. And as Audrey mentioned, from a diver mm. diversification perspective, they're investing in a number of different companies, um, predominantly in South Africa, but they do have uh, international exposure as well. Um, and just recently they did an acquisition with Grinrod. Uh, we think we like that, uh, the rationale of that so investment. So, Audrey, uh, with regards to ETFs, uh, do you favor ETFs at this point and perhaps gold ETFs at this point, the new gold ETF here in South Africa? Yes, ETF definitely has a um, part to play in a diversified portfolio. So uh, the new gold ETF I think is the most widely known and held ETF, but Standard Bank has recently launched an Africa commodity ETN, which is which actually exchange traded note, which we do find attractive and we're looking towards that because you get exposure to a, a basket of commodities um, which should benefit if the commodity prices come back. They have been off their recent highs um, recently. So yes, uh, definitely commodity ETFs. I mean, in our portfolios, the gold ETF has helped investors a lot just to buffer against the losses we've seen on equity shares. And um, we are still holding on to that position. Uh, the recent RAND weakness have help the RAND gold price, so the ETF hasn't come back that much as in dollar terms. So definitely, again, you need to build a portfolio with diversified sources of return. You need to find uncorrelated um, portfolios. That's the key, uncorrelated returns. Fantastic. Thank you. On that note, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Audrey, for joining us. Audrey Fulion from Quantum Wealth.